right, well, today we were going to try to spend some time maybe talking about Ecclesiastes. I've been studying this, and I preached on it on Sunday, um, a few things about it. I think it was interesting, Ecclesiastes is uh, kind of the called out, a, a, a group of people that's been called out. That's what Ecclesiastes is. And then, and then of the preacher, so it means somebody was called out, and then the preacher was going to give them some kind of um, proclamation of something that he learned and so that's we we think it's probably Solomon, and and he the, there's a theme all the way through this. Twenty nine times in Ecclesiastes is the word under the sun, and really what I think this is about is the perspective of someone that's living their life, and their view is just everything that's not heavenly, it's not godly, it's just under the sun living. It's just I'm going through life, living my life, not really for God, but just for myself, and just experiencing life. And so the the preacher the um, probably Solomon, gives his testimony of what he found when he tried to experiment with just living life under the sun and not really thinking about God. And so I, I kind of outlined it a little bit. I'm just going to kind of share a little bit of this, and then we'll kind of hit some different ideas. But I think it might be interesting for us as, a, as people listening today to kind of think about, are we living our life, the life that we're going through every day? Are we living it kind of without really thinking about God's involvement in our life. We're just going through the motions of doing what we want to do. It's interesting because um, I, I said that chapter one and two, uh, the preacher Solomon gives a clear testimony of what he did. He talks about, you know, there's one generation comes and a generation goes day uh, goes to day and there's no new thing under the sun and just things continue to continue on. And so he says, I gave myself to try to, try to figure out what's philosophy. I, I, I gave myself to philosophy in verse 14 of chapter 1. I, I gave myself to pleasures, chapter 2 and verse 1 and, and few through there. I gave myself to just to pleasures. And what would what would those experiences be? And then he talks about in 5 or so, I, 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 I thought, I'll give myself my property. And if I can just gain more property, I'll be happy in life. And then he talks about possessions and treasures, and he felt like, I'm doing pretty great. I am great. And then he says, it was very interesting, then he says, but then I realized one thing happens to everybody, they die. I was like, man, what a, <laughs> what a crazy, what a cra-. he said, I got all these things that I wanted, and then I realized, yeah, it's just vanity, and we're all going to die one day. And then he goes into, so you know what it calls me? It calls me to have a lot of despair. Mm. I think a lot of people live this way. They just go through life. They're not really thinking about God. They're not even thinking about what does God want from my life. I think that's kind of what James 4 was even talking about, about um, the, the whole idea of not realizing life's like a vapor, and we don't even ask God mm-hmm. what God wants in our life, and our daily life. So here's people just going through life trying to amass what they think makes them happy mm-hmm. and makes them great and not realizing that really it's going to be just vexation of spirit and all vanity, and then when they finally get to that place of realizing it, he said in verse 17 of chapter 2, therefore I hated life. Mm-hmm. And you start thinking, man, you know, it's just all vanity, and it's not really much to show. If you live your life, and I, I counsel people all the time, I'm trying to preach people all the time, trying to help people all the time, trying to encourage people all the time, and I think a big problem, obviously he wrote this in the Old Testament, but I'm telling you a big problem in Christianity is people that are just living their life for the for the now and what I can soak out of life. And he even comes to his conclusion in verse 24 is, there is nothing better for man than to, he should eat and drink and his soul just enjoy the good of his labor. That's Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. And that's kind of, I think a lot of people live this way. They're not really considering what God wants for their life. I, I, I think... Uh, you you had mentioned you know Solomon's writing here in the Old Testament. Well, Paul in Colossians chapter three yeah. says we need to set our affections on things above, yeah. not on things of this earth. Yeah, and I think sometimes, at least as humans, it's it's very difficult to kind of have that eternal focus and yeah. that godly focus because we live you know in the world today, yeah. and so we kind of get sucked into this idea of well, I just need to get everything I can. Mm-hmm. Um, right now and and this is you brought up james 4 too james 4 the first few verses talk about our lust yeah and if you read this our lust will never be quenched will never be filled and this is why he said i hated life because i am never able to get what i think i want or what i think i need because we're constantly working we're constantly toiling we're constantly striving 
because I think I need this when really uh, we can be content with what we have uh, as long yeah. as we're looking toward toward God. Well, even if you think about uh, James 4, I didn't ever thought about this until just we just started talking about this just now. But James 4 even talks about you have not because you ask, you not. ask not. And then because you ask amiss that you mm-hmm. consume in your own lust. Yep. So here's a here's somebody, at least in James 4, that's just going through life and mm-hmm. not even asking God Correct. to be involved in their life. Yeah. And they're making plans for the future, mm-hmm. not even considering the fact that they don't have a promise of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. here's people in Ecclesiastes, here's the preacher saying, that's kind of how I live life. He yeah. said, I gave myself to, um, I gave myself, my, I gave my heart to, I sought with my heart, wine, and I laid a hold on folly, and I just kind of acquainted myself with wisdom. I think people are doing that all over the place in churches right yeah. now, that I'll get acquainted with wisdom on Sunday, but I'm going to give myself to folly and lay hold on folly and seek after wine, and 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 he talks about merriment and mirth, and I'm just going to give myself to to social I mean, mirth being social merriment and entertainment. I'm just going to give myself to being entertained in life and not really consider God. I think it's interesting. I think there's a lot of people live that way. And I think if you live that way, and tell me what you think. I think if you live, if your life is spent on just under the sun, what kind of things do I have? Do I have a, a nice house, a nice things, a, a pretty wife or a handsome husband or or my kids are doing well, or they're they're doing well on their basketball or softball team, yeah. or then life is good. But if one of those things gets removed yeah. in the under the sun life, I'm like, I hate life. I'm I'm ready yeah. to die. I hate life because things aren't working out for me. Well, that's that's what I was actually. It's crazy that you brought that up because they're you know it, that's a very anxious life when you're focused on hmm. things that are changing down here because we place unknowingly we place our identity in these things that are down here and because we want things to go well. So we put our time, we put ourself into things, wanting them to improve. But because we put our identity in those things, when those things change, when things aren't going Mm -hmm. well, then that's when, you know, that's determines if we have a good day or we don't have a good day Mm -hmm. is because our identity is in these things. And when you put your whole life into these things, and those things change, then your whole life's ruined, especially if you spent your whole life on these things and you get to the end of it saying none of it was worth it. I mean, honestly, we should look at Solomon's example of saying, okay, he, if he literally said that he was, I mean, had a thousand women all, you know, all around, he, nothing, he, anything he desired, he kept not from it. If his example is this, and he said, God was still the better thing, yeah. then I think we should look at that because Honestly, when he gets down to the end of it, I just did a class on um, on the judgments in the Bible, and we're going to stand before God one day. And if we would just live our life saying, I'm going to do as much as I can for God and have our identity in Him, He never changes. Right. So it's a very confident thing. It's a very exciting thing to know that despite what I do, He doesn't change. And so my confidence, my excitement, my enthusiasm should come from that. And then knowing I'm going to stand for Him, I'm going to do as much as I can for Him. Well, that's, you know, that in... in um in chapter three of Ecclesiastes, he even says, you know, we know the thing about in every in everything there is a season. He mm-hmm. goes through to born, to die, to plant and pluck up, to kill, to heal. He goes through all those things. And then he says there's a certain truth. And this is what you just said. I think it's interesting that you really led right into this chapter three part. He says God's doing things. He's just mm-hmm. continuously doing things, doing things here, there, everywhere, continuously working and then he talks about, I call it a certain truth. That truth is, he says, um, God is doing things. In verse 11 of chapter 3, he said, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Mm-hmm. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. And I know there's no good in them. And so the idea here is God is doing things around us that, according to this verse, are beautiful. He's actually doing things and and working in life, but man is living their life for their cars or their their house or their relationships or and they're never considering what God is actually doing because their focus is in verse eleven in the world. The world is in their heart, and it's just about what's under the sun. And we're missing the great things that God's trying to do in our lives to actually reveal Himself to us. And let me say this, and then I want you to yeah, say what you're going to say. The next little phrase down, which goes into what you just said about judgment, he says, but he knew this. There's coming a day that under the sun, he said he realized something, that God is going to judge everything. 
And mm-hmm. and he said that he he became to a conclusion. You know what? It has to be about more than this because God's going to judge everything. Mm-hmm. And you've got to be thinking that way about life a little bit, that there is going to be an end to this. Mm-hmm. And we've got to think about what mm-hmm. God thinks about what we're doing. I, th- I think uh, just just all of this kind of all ties together. I, I think sometimes we get the false view of our life. And like what Brother Micaiah was saying is we can look at our life and people say, well, look, I've got a good job. My family mm-hmm. is doing well. And, and our focus gets too much on the world because we feel like we don't have to think on God. Mm-hmm. Right. Everything is good in, in our eyes, in our right. eyes. Everything is good. Right. I mean, the man in Luke that Jesus uses as an example, he says, look, I'm prosperous. I mean, I have so much stuff. I need to tear down these yeah. barns yeah. and build up more barns. Look, I, the way I'm viewing it, the way other people would view it, yeah, we're doing pretty good. But right. God says, hey, thou fool, you know, tonight your soul your soul's going to be required right. of the t- tonight. Your the the end of your life will be, and sometimes we kind of get these false views of I'm not going through a storm now. I, I'm good. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. And also something else, you know, you were just talking about the their their pleasure was in the world. That's where their focus was. Um, Brother Brett literally just mentioned a verse earlier that throughout all of these things that he was doing, the wisdom was still with him. Mm-hmm. And so every single day we're having a choice, whether it's the world or whether it's wisdom. Yeah. And we're making that decision. And that was in the Old Testament. But today, we either have the flesh or we have the spirit, yeah. and every single day we're choosing. Okay, do I want to do what I want to do, or I do? Do I want to do what God wants me to do? And we're living whether it's in the wisdom or we're letting it's in the world. And at the end of the road, where that world is, it's always going to be depression. It's always going to be anxiety because we're always trying to focus on getting ahead. We're always trying to focus on progressing. When in reality, the only way to really progress, you know, godliness with contentment is great gain. So realizing where you are brings you further. Mm-hmm. If you if you really focus on that, it'll bring you a whole lot further. But when we're focused on trying to progress in the world and all these other things, it always brings anxiety. And it always brings, I'm always trying to get ahead. We're always focusing on what we do have or, or don't have or um, you know, or the past or all these other things than focusing on the God that never changes and, and knowing that I'm already accepted with him. Now I'm just going to seek to please him with my whole life. It's so. funny because we didn't really set this up because we were, mm-hmm. I think we were going to do a different podcast when we walked up here and then we just said, let's just do this one. Mm-hmm. But you're doing a great job of probably the spirits leading you right now of segueing into everything because the next fra- the next thing he talks about in chapter four is a person that is, they are travailing in life they're not that they're they're trying to gain more stuff and and that's all they're living their life for in chapter 4 he's going to talk about the man that's trying to gain more in his life but in 8 down through like uh, 12 or 13 he's trying to gain more in life but he's not he's going to reach the end of this and realize look at all the stuff I've got the problem is he didn't have anybody to share it with and 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 then he also talks about he's gaining stuff and there's always going to be people around that are kind of coveting. Mm-hmm. I wish I had what he had. Mm-hmm. The under the the under the sun mentality is I've got to get more things, yeah. like you mm-hmm. said. And then there's people that are in the under the sun mentality. It's all like, well, how come they have more than I've got? Mm-hmm. And they're not ha- mm-hmm. they're they're unhappy mm-hmm. because they don't have what their neighbors got. Mm-hmm. And then here's this other guy, the neighbor that's got stuff. He's working himself to death to get stuff, and he realizes he's left behind his children, mm-hmm. his wife. And he has no one to share it with. Yeah. And he gets to the end of his life. It's vanity. And he realizes, man, I've got all these things, but I don't have a family with me. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's really a vain, empty, vexation of spirit type of life that's lived. But I'm just telling you, there are Christians mm-hmm. today mm-hmm. that are in our churches that are living this life. And you say, well, do we, do, you know, what, do they, they need to experience it? Like, mm-hmm. you know, what did he have to experience it? I don't know why he had to experience mm-hmm. this, but he did. Um, Solomon did experience yeah. it. And then Solomon wrote about it yeah. so that you could trust it and not have to experience it. Mm-hmm. And what's, what's interesting with it um, is, uh, and I'm not going to say more uh, go through this Ecclesiastes after this one, but chapter 5. He also talks about the the last thing that I was kind of reading through was a common tendency, and that was he talked about going into the house of God and making sacrifices of fools, being rash with your mouth and your heart, making vows to God. And I thought, man, doesn't this just fit 
what I see in Christianity today. Here's people that are giving, they're acquainting themselves with wisdom, but laying hold on folly. Mm -hmm. They're trying to find pleasure and philosophy and property and possessions to make them feel good about their life. And they're not looking at the beauty of what God's trying to do. And then they're not considering the judgment that's going to face at the end of it. And then in chapter four, they're living their life to amass all these things. And one guy's coveting it and the other guy's got it and he's losing his family. And then when they do go to church, you know, the chapter five is not really going to church, but they're going in the house of God and they go in and they just say foolish things and they, mm. and they, they vow foolish vows to God and they never really think about what they're really saying to God and what they're really doing. It, it becomes more about just going in and they don't really consider that they're really doing evil. Mm. It's interesting to think how that relates to today. And, and I think, I mean, it's, it, you're, you're right. And I think it's because we might have a skewed view of who God is. Well, true. And, and I mean, because we, we understand in Timothy, right, that you said it, God, uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. And it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Right. And how we, we, we sometimes, and again, this is just our view under the sun, is we're looking at all the stuff that we have and that we're getting, and we think, yeah, I'm good. You know, you know I must be doing something that God wants me to do because look at all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And really, we're foolish, Mm -hmm. And some of the things that we're saying, some of the things that we're doing, because our focus has has really gotten off of, and you said this before, has gotten off of on the giver of the stuff, Mm -hmm. just onto the stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where we put kind of our identity. We love the blessing more than the blesser. More than the blesser. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think as well, sorry, we had one less mic today, so that's why we keep like like doing that. But um, when we stand before God one day, it says we're going to be judged for what sort it is, not what size it is. And I think the focus with our lives is let's get, let's see how big the size we can get everything. Mm-hmm. You know, let's, how much money can we get? How many, you know, how many cars can we get? And we're always looking at improving, and progressing on what size we can get it when God's saying the whole time, what sort, of what sort is it? Mm-hmm. What, where's your heart at? Where's your motive? Are you serving me with the right spirit? God love it, the cheerful giver. You know, it's just, yeah, that's where the focus is with God. And I think if we would also just, we don't have to live the same life Solomon lived. And I know we say that, but we look at their example. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, like Belshazzar looking at uh, Nebuchadnezzar's example, Daniel said, you literally messed up. You knew what he did, but yet you lived that way anyway. You should have lived a life of observation. Um, and instead of actually living out what your grandfather did, you know it was a mistake. And that's the same we, thing we look at Solomon. We look at his life and say, oh, man, that's a mistake that he did that. I would never do that. And, and yet we, we literally walk down the same road of focusing on stuff instead of focusing on, like Brother Brett said, the God who gives the stuff yeah. and focusing on pleasing him. And that's where our identity is. Then we'll really live a satisfied life because he never changes. So. So I would so I would say maybe as we wrap this up that what we need to be thinking about maybe today you're listening to this and you're thinking you know what I really kind of have been kind of James chapter four or Ecclesiastes living it's been kind of the mm-hmm. under the sun just doing what I want to do my own lusts and I haven't even asked God I haven't even really been considering what God wants in my life I've just been doing what I want to do and and uh, and if things are going really good I feel. I feel like I'm great. He, yeah. you know, it's funny in chapter one he said I'm great, or uh, I think it was the beginning of chapter two. He said I'm great. The end of chapter two he says I hate life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's what people do. They they are like, man, I feel great. Why? Because I got a new this or I got a new that. And then you're like, next week I hate life. Why do you hate life? Last week you were on cloud nine. Yeah. And now you're in the dumps. Well, my I had a wreck or whatever. And your life, your ups and downs are contingent on under the sun living Mm -hmm. instead of on who the Savior is and who God is. And I think that that's a miserable way for us to live our life. And I think maybe we're to learn something from this. Mm -hmm. And even today, if you're listening, you may say, you know what? I need to to get my affections, like you said at the beginning, on things above Mm -hmm. and not on things of this world. And maybe I'd live a more satisfied or a more peaceful life at the very least. I think that'd be good for us to do. Do you have something you were trying to add there? Yeah. I saw you. Nope. Looks like you're leaning into the mic a little nope. bit. All right. All right. Well, nope. praise the Lord. Well, hopefully this has been a help to you. I really hope it has. And maybe just think a little bit today about where's God in your life. Maybe just ask him and invite him to be part of, of what you're doing in your life and maybe try to link yourself up with what he may have for you for today. So hope it's a blessing to you. God bless you.